Um, and today's presentation, I'm gonna focus first, a little market focus to show right now in the market, some brands and products that are coming out that show the direction of what I just shared with you. Uh, and then I'm gonna share Riverside and Revelry, which we feel are the two key important trends right now, because we usually uh, address four key trends in the market, but Riverside and Revelry uh, at this moment, after talking with the team uh, in Paris, uh, who's really helped a lot with the information, um, the team in Carlin is great and they've helped me to put together some information uh, and some things going on in Paris for you. So um, these are the trends that we really feel uh, are the ones not to miss and to share with you today. Uh, and then uh, lastly, a little section on what's going on in Paris, because, you know, it's always fun to be an armchair traveler, especially now when we're not traveling. But uh, I'll share a few slides at the end uh, that have to do with retail and some exhibitions going on that further show these trends um, in the market. Uh, so just to focus on the, uh, just a little focus on a few pages, um, this is about the environment. I mean, during the confinement, we've seen examples of wildlife resuming its rights during COVID. Uh, here on the right, you could see just um, in Venice, uh, but not only Venice, of course, um, all the water is becoming clearer and blue again and signs of uh, undersea life visible again. We also see you know, wildlife, um, animals, raccoons, lions, we've seen bears all coming out of their habitat. Uh, to, to reclaim the land again. So we're just reminded that wildlife is always resuming its rights. Um, and this even shows further the impact of humans on a daily basis um, on our planet. And so COVID has definitely accelerated uh, human awareness right now. Uh, and this is what's reinforcing the trends and probably touching people actually more than it would have um, right now had COVID not existed at this moment. Uh, let's focusing on uh, a brand um, and just we just picked Adidas because, you know, uh, I wanted to pick some relevant in, uh, trends uh, because we're always updating trends. Right. But, you know, these are some relevant ones that have been covered in the market right now. So uh, since we were putting this together in the moment, uh, we just chose some very recent um, examples. But this is about Adidas, Adidas's uh, latest commitment to waste. And as you can see in the timetable here, um, you know, waste is the problem, so innovation is the solution. And so Adidas uh, continue, it's just continually uh, demonstrating their commitment to end uh, plastic waste. And as you can see, uh, just back as far as 1998, uh, 1998, they prohibited all the use of harmful um, toxic chemicals. Um, by 19, by 2015, um, with Parlay for the Oceans, they uh, Adidas and Parlay launched a single shoe as part of a long-term eco partnership. And just as of 2020, uh, this year, more than 50% of their products will use recycled plastics. And by 2024, they are hoping to plan uh, phasing out all virgin plastic and polyester in their products. So these are brands right in the moment of the trend addressing these crises that um, we're looking at. Another thing I'd like to share with you, just uh, two slides more on this, um, but here you see uh, a, a focus on the secondhand market. Um, we're seeing more and more uh, consumers buying secondhand instead of retail, um, which is a concern for retailers. Um, but here we've seen uh, not only by Gucci, but you know by ThreadUp, there's, there's a lot of um, brands and retailers out there right now doing collaborations and fundraising. Um, but this one was more recent, just this month. And so I thought I would share this one. Um, on October 5th, uh, Gucci and The Real Real, the luxury consignment website, announced a collaboration um, because of all the concern around consumption and the growing need for authenticity. We just see this uh, enormous growth in this sector. Um, Second hand has grown 21 times greater than retail over this past uh, three years. And by 2023, it's expected to hit uh, 51 million. So uh, they're even saying that by 2028, um, this whole secondhand market is predicted to be stronger than fast fashion ever was. Um, so in just in sharing, you know, some of the key trends that are happening, um, we see a lot of uh, this in the market right now. 
Back to Adidas again, and I promise you I don't work for them um, and I don't advertise for them, but it was just two good examples in the market right now uh, because not only um, were they part of the commitment, um, because they're in a couple of the trends, but not only are they having a commitment to end plastic, but they're also uh, part of this uh, secondhand uh, market that's so promising. And they just recently unveiled their future uh, craft to sneaker. It's a second generation sneaker out of 100% recyclable uh, materials. Again, just showing how the examples I showed you just before are really fortifying uh, the importance of this trend. Uh, and lastly, again, just talking about motivations and social cultural trends, um, just to, to leave off with the latest movements that are hopefully moving us toward um, new horizons. Um, but on the left, you see uh, an example of uh, Dolce and Gabbana's Spring Summer 21 show, um, where they had every age, gender, and sexual orientation catered to on the runway. Um, and they even had uh, their, um, the show provided uh, basically it was a DNA themed show. And so they really show the fact that Dolce & Gabbana's show proved that diversity is part of their core DNA. And within the show, they even sent out fingerprinted invites. Um, so the message for them during the show was um, very clear. Uh, everyone looks good in D&G &G and always has and always will. Um, so we really love that show. And then on the right, um, here we are, guys, just days away from our election in, in America. Um, and we see a record number of businesses that are making election day a paid vacation uh, for employees, which is adding momentum to the whole registration, uh, voter registration efforts. But, you know, companies like um, Nike and Twitter and Best Buy, you know, major corporations are actually giving employees time off to go vote uh, during COVID-19. Um, because they know that the lines are longer than usual. And so they're giving them uh, the opportunity to make sure that they vote. Um, but again, also in the trend, um, we see people really, really coming together and connecting. We saw, um, I don't know, we've probably just seen at the election polls, uh, Spotify list being put together and you know, entertainment and music where people are line dancing and are entertaining everyone. Um, and so even though we're very, apart and we feel isolated at this moment, uh, we're all coming together and feeling even more connected than ever uh, right now. So even though we're physically isolated a little bit more, we feel closer and more united to one another um, than we have in the past. Um, so anyway, uh, just to share that uh, with you and oh, the fashion item uh, that's breaking some sales is the Vote America t-shirt, <laughs> by the way. Um, so anyway, just to leave off before we start on the presentation, don't forget to get out there and vote uh, if you haven't already done so. Uh, whoever you're voting for, exercise your right as an American, just everybody get out there and vote next week. So uh, to start with the presentation, as I mentioned, I'm going to present two trends, uh, Riverside and Revelry. Um, a few key points that are important. Uh, this trend is around um, some sporty shirting, fluid, uh, fluidity and length and lightweight fabrics um, and lots of uh, layering. And what I'm going to do um, is at the beginning of each trend, I'm just going to play a short video because it's always nice to see a little washover. Um, and then I'll come back and just take you through uh, the trends. So hopefully this is going to technically work. Yes. Okay, great. Thank <laughs> you. 
with a few slides that show why, uh, the why behind the trend. Um, so here in the first slide, uh, just a few uh, socio trends. Um, we're seeing uh, this new emerging uh, market of young green actives uh, who are fully informed um, and aware of the threat uh, to their survival and young people around the world are mobilizing for their future. And so we've seen uh, this emergence of all these young green actives who feel a sense of urgency in rebalancing our relationship uh, with the environment. So both rural and urban, um, they understand the interdependence between humanity and nature, and they really want to uh, reinvent the ecosystem of tomorrow. Uh, another example around a biodiversified environment, uh, we're seeing a lot of startups um, being created, um, again, because of for good intentions uh, around the economy and sustainability. And this globalist behavior really considers the company and the impact of what it produces on a whole um, and challenges sustainability. Um, so here we're seeing uh, a French brand, uh, an online uh, platform uh, called, Pos uh, I have to pronounce this French, but um, Posky. Uh, and they offer its customers uh, crates of fish that are less known but abundant and inexpensive uh, because they've been fished in a responsible manner. And so, respective of nature, um, they work directly around 60 fishermen who practice sustainable fishing. Uh, they use boats no bigger than 12 meters, no trawling nets, um, and they only do one-day expeditions. And in the end, the fishermen are actually paid more money uh, than the market value because they want to encourage fishermen to really reduce the depletion of resources that threaten uh, the overconsumption of, you know, the more well-known um, fish. Uh, and lastly, uh, this last slide is based around uh, the waterways, uh, which is why our trend is called Riverside, um, because we've seen a rising interest and respect for water as a source of life uh, that's being transposed to our rivers. Um, and this is about a Chinese sturgeon nature preserve project that's set to open in 2021. Uh, the project is around irrigating cities and around the world and riverbanks, uh, which are all being fitted out to save endangered spe species uh, and to restore biodiversity. And so the whole mission is to restore oxygen to the waterways that breathe uh, life and energy into overcrowded cities. And by the way, uh, their efforts will be on display in a public and immersive aquarium, uh, all with the goal of educating um, their visitors about saving um, the environment. Um, so that brings us to how we get the basis for our trends. And here uh, in the first uh, trend revelry is uh, really a mood board and lifestyle board that's based around uh, the water and this whole idea around a revitalizing nature. And so we're seeing here um, this energizing elegance, a sporty, fresh touch, uh, and liquid shine elements that really look like they're emerging like below from you know the flow of rapid rushing water. Uh, the colors here are um, all around oxygenated blues and greens and mineral colors. Uh, and we always get this feeling of a galvanized nature uh, that's like revealing, you know, surfaces exposed to the elements over time with a little corrosion, uh, which offer a fresh new warmth uh, and beauty that feels like it's constantly changing. And in the center, you see um, a style. We're looking at this, the silhouette that's, that's key is around this, you know, fresh, upbeat, upbeat um, chic, utility and swimwear uh, layered sportswear looks um, in these fresh colors and very, very lightweight uh, and technical fabrics. So looking at the key style directions from uh, left to right, um, we're seeing light layering and um, 
with more modular and functional uh, vibes. Uh, silhouettes with a chic minimalism, yet a sporty touch. Uh, for fabrics, we're looking at all the uh, neutral uh, poplins and shiny Lorex jerseys. Uh, and fabrics in general that are just light wrestling fabrics um, that give more of a mineral look. And then in the next slide for uh, design elements, uh, a focus on colors in all these, you know, this refreshing blue, um, azure blue, uh, the white, uh, crystalline waters, gray shale, all the colors of nature uh, mixed with a little bit of shine and a celadon liquid shine um, here uh, for the matte shine effect. Uh, for accessories, uh, you're going to see, you know, more elegant utility effects, uh, kind of these enveloping hats, uh, things that are played with matte or sheer uh, treatments, and lots of crossbody bags and fanny packs just for the uh, casual elegance um, and the, the element. Uh, and then you see, oh, my screen is covering it, but um, the last slide there on the right um, is the development of a key item for the season, which is all these long roomy shirts uh, that are featured in you know, lots of layers, longer layers uh, with sport details. Which leads us um, obviously to the color palette, which is really just a beautiful color palette. It's all these invigorating colors of like a breath of fresh air. And so we see all the colors reflective of the water, of the nature, of the sky, uh, with elements of shine. Uh, so we're looking here at these river greens, these oxygenated blues, as I said, all played against kind of gray rock, uh, mineral and neutral tones. Um, and we see this liven up with the use of matte and Lorex shine um, combinations like you see on the left. Uh, this is an important uh, slide. Um, I'll cover this in both trends. Um, and I like to address harmonies because every time I work with clients, they say, you know, oh, well, I, I need the most current colors. And, you know, I, I can't use that color because I've already used that color. Um, but harmonies are really important for the season. And it's the way that you update your seasonal collections month to month. And so Carlin does a great job of providing different harmonies to work with because colors don't die after one usage for the season. They evolve month to month. Uh, they offer fresh ways to update your collection, your timings and deliveries with new palettes. Uh, and it's also a way just to kind of update a new color into your ongoing basis, basics. And so here we see, for instance, playing with the colors, you have this geological approach with the blue torrent, the shale and the crystalline waters, um, something that's a little bit more lively with a lightness, um, with crystalline water, the white, and here we've mixed a black noir in. Um, the third harmony, which has a little bit more of changing climates, and we add in the magnesia and that antique celadon lorex, or in the last harmony, which is more of a calmer vitality with the inky night, the white, the magnesia, and the antique celadon lorex. So lots of ways to update um, your seasonal um, products uh, on the floor. Um, and just also interesting ways to think about playing with stripe layouts or prints um, and some different colorways for different looks. To focus on the fabrics for this trend, uh, we're looking at some of the prints uh, and fabrics. And so here, all the prints, uh, these are just a few, but all the prints inspire like new and uneven um, refined effects, uh, things that look like waves on rocks or aquatic ripples, um, or maybe like, you know, flowers floating down. Uh, the water, reinventing aquatic patterns. Um, prints are paired with like mountainous skies or maybe with some modern uh, teller stripes. Uh, and we see the use of sheer light materials like extra light nylons uh, for total finesse. Uh, and that just adds to the whole chic elegance, sport elegance of this trend, as you can see in the picture there. And the fabrics, uh, where we see a lot of extra light uh, nylon and elastic strapping. Um, so lingerie and sophistic, sophistic, more sophisticated at leisure. At leisure isn't as casual and basic um, and sporty as it's been. We see lingerie and at leisure combining in a more uh, sophisticated way uh, with more minimal tones like this um, with different surface finishes that are giving it a more um, contemporary look. And so we're seeing softened paneling, grain, uh, webbing, tech, 
uh, and lots of fluid panels that create new silhouettes that offer a feeling of this more uh, sporty chicness um, that you're seeing. So to focus in on what some of those key looks look like, and again, giving you different directions, the first one is around stylish tech, where we're looking at, you know, maybe this gathered tuxedo jacket. Um, and by the way, there is, um, it's not like all the trends are casual, but there is, there are a lot of jackets and tailoring on the runway um, and in the collections, but even the tailor jackets are softer and more drapier and, and things are a little roomier and oversized. Um, especially, thank goodness, because we've all been working from home very comfortably and we're used to this more looser, comfortable feel. Um, but here you can see uh, the tuxedo jacket, the modular desk, again, sporty details, uh, things uh, to add on like, you know, gathers, cord stoppers, which are updating these classic pieces. The shirt, the shirt dressed uh, with a more modernized utilitarian trim, utilitarian trim to give it that sporty chic look. Um, and that leisure is updated by more treatments on it, like fastener treatments um, and lots of ultra texturized um, materials. And everything is paired with, um, and a few of the trends were pairing uh, translucent accessories, which finish off the look with this more sporty <clears throat> modern tech feeling. Uh, and then on the next slide, everything around the shirting layering, again, which is very important to the season, Longer shirts, a lot of longer shirts, uh, lots of layers, different layers of long drapey uh, fabrics and shirts in different lengths, um, played with contrast details, metal eyelets, um, and again, worn with a cross body bag for more of this, you know, casual uh, effect. Uh, and the last two looks are one here on the left of this more sporty chic. And so here you see again that shirt, but here the shirt has been put into uh, a dress, uh, a shirt dress uh, that underneath is worn uh, with like a bodycon uh, bike short. Again, the cross body bag and a pair of sporty, comfortable platform sandals that really finish off uh, the look. And on the last slide, the uh, here we're looking at this more minimalist swim look. So we see a lot of swimwear details, a lot of cutouts, uh, more of a sport influence. Um, with the swimwear vibe top with the cutouts or like the framing on the right side, the body framing. Um, and again, full waisted high skirts uh, worn with high tops um, or maybe even a diving shoe. Again, we're really being inspired to a lot this season besides the trends here um, because of all the stay home fashion. So we've been a little bit creative in our closets this season, mixing sport pieces because, you know, we're doing just this sitting in front of a Zoom, sitting in front of a Zoom, doing our meetings and our presentations. And so we're wearing, you know, bike shorts on the bottom and then or athletic tights or some loungewear piece. Um, and then we're putting on, you know, tops because, you know, we're working and we're seeing each other. And so we're dressing a little bit more chic around the top and a little bit more casual on the bottom. Uh, and we're having a little fun with our wardrobe mixing pieces right now. Uh, which brings us to uh, our second important theme, which is uh, revelry. Uh, and here, this is a very, it's a lighthearted, fun, happy trend, uh, sparkling femininity, this more kind of a uh, fun Lolita spirit. Uh, and it's also about just dressing really casual and fun and cool for the summer. So I'm gonna start off again with a little video uh, and then we'll go into the trends for revelry.
So um, you remember at the beginning of the presentation when I share that slide um, about motivations. Um, and when we looked at individual motivations and you know things like wellness and well-being, naturality being part of the individual motivations. Um, well, this season, this year, um, conviviality is the new well-being. And so here we're referring to a study, a global study carried out by Opinion Way, um, where 90% of those asked uh, feel that convivi conviviality today is really a source of well being. So being happy uh, and content. And so, but interesting enough, while 61% say they feel the world is less convivial at the moment, um, than it was five years ago. Uh, even more alarming, 67% um, of 18 to 34 year olds really regret seeing their friends less and less um, due to social networks. Um, and of course now, so social distancing as well. Uh, and they really, really miss um, the social connectivity of really being with other people. Um, so this study uh, really reveals a frustration that generates uh, the desire to share in more when social moments, daily celebrations with other people, with friends and gatherings and have more uh, of a human uh, social touch uh, instead of just social networks. And so we're all missing the desire and the social aspect of connecting to others <clears throat> more so than before since we've been so isolated um, than now with COVID. And so we see an emergence of this these social socially friendly uh, individuals who really aspire not only to reconnect and, and have uh, spontaneous and joyful times and moments, um, but they want to do it with in a light way, in a lightness, in a happy way, mingling in diversified surroundings with music and gatherings and really having um, sparkling expressions of happiness um, and joyfulness. Um, and, 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 you know, again, in this convivial, con conviviality, sorry, way where... Um, they just want to be with people and enjoy the moment uh, and enjoy life. Uh, and on another side uh, of this direction, we're looking at accessibility um, right now and supporting all initiatives that aim to promote accessibility. And here, uh, this is a Starbucks actually in Washington, DC, and they opened up a store um, that only employed, only employs uh, speakers of sign language. Um, and this is uh, inspired by the Deaf Project, uh, which is a study by Hansel Bauman. Um, and all the layouts of the stores um, incorporate all design elements that respond to issues that are encountered by deaf and hard of hearing people um, on a daily basis. So the whole objective of the, of the space is not only, you know, as usual, like Starbucks is bringing people together because you can hang out in there and, you know, be on your computer or just grab a coffee. But the whole objective of this space is to bring clients' worlds together, whether they're deaf or, or hard of hearing or they're elderly, um, to be all happy together in, you know, one place. Um, and it's a profitable initiative because um, the study shows that more, there are more than one billion handicapped people uh, in the world today, uh, which is a revenue of about $8 billion, which makes it the largest, uh, the third largest economic power, superior to that of Japan, Germany, uh, and the United Kingdom, if you look at it. So this trend revelry is all about that. It's about being happy and spontaneous and enjoying in the moment um, and simple pleasures. And so here, fun and entertainment is um, a necessity. And you see all of these silhouettes dressed with spontaneity and simplicity um, and just mingling and being outside or in places for a happy spirit. So it's this feeling of um, a cool casualness um, and a femininity that's embracing, you know, this gentle sun-kissed lifestyle uh, that you find in maybe a seaside town, um, 
It's about being in, you know, colorful neighborhoods, blending into summertime, uh, joyful festivities, and and just dressing in silhouettes that are just full of summer with sparkling lightness and, you know, uh, flowers and and just mixing prints and patterns together in a deliberate way to combine, you know, colors and prints um, and materials together, uh, very much the way that we've been doing at home during the confinement of just mixing things together and putting them on, um, you know, in sporadic ways um, and just enjoying, you know, going in our closet, uh, going shopping in our closets at home and just putting things together um, in a creative way. Um, but here the influence is really uh, around the Southern spirit of France. It's about gathering and sharing moments. And here you have this you know, kind of floral charm that's really inspired um, by a Provencal countryside. And so when we look at the style directions here, uh, really the key looks of this trend, again, on the left is around this, you know, this sparkling simplicity. Here you're seeing a remastered uh, Provencal touch with the, you know, polka dot top and this very soft ruffled skirt. Uh, in the second look, uh, keying into on the fabrics, we see lots of eyelets and embroideries, uh, crochets and textured effects um, like seersucker or PK canvas um, or micro motifs. And then for the accessories, um, there's a whole range for accessories of uh, really, you know, pinks, um, you know, range of pinks, kiwi green. Um, and we love this buttercup yellow. Um, it's a fresh yellow and yellow is a great pop color. Um, but it's also a great neutral of the season. And yellow is a really, really important color uh, for spring. And we love yellow, actually, in the U.S. We do very well with yellows always, if they're the right yellows. Um, and then for accessories, um, we're looking at natural materials um, and more in this Lolita spirit. Uh, and again, the key, really the key item to point out here is this um, ruffled fluid uh, skirt, wrap skirt. Uh, that's really a key item for the season. So when we look at the uh, color palette, we're um, really talking again about this very fresh <clears throat> summertime range of blooming flowers um, and fresh fruit, fruity colors. And so we're looking at all these fresh fruity pinks. Um, you see the wisteria, the buttercup yellow, uh, that raspberry pulp, and the kiwi that really make up the base of the fabric. And these colors are great to use for prints, or just in, you see, they're not, they don't look shocking. They're just in fresh colors like you see um, on the left. Um, and there's a lot of lace for the season. There's a lot of lingerie and lace um, fabrics, very comfortable, very soft. And a lot of them are recycled um, from plastics. And we have an enormous amount of fabrics in the book. And I have to say, when I was looking through them, because all of our books are very tactile, it's just amazing um, how soft and stretchy the fabrics are and they're all recycled. And so there's been a lot of new development in fabrics and Carlin uses a lot of actual tactile fabrics in the book. So I invite you to, um, well, I can't invite you. It's a virtual show, but I can show you in a presentation if you want to see some. Uh, and so anyway, to look further again, as I said, the harmonies are really important. Here you see uh, some different harmonies. The first one, um, around this range of blooming flowers. And we're always adding this cotton white because the cotton white is always making the colors very fresh for the season. Um, so we have this wisteria, the strawberry juice, the white cotton and the kiwi. Um, or here we're playing just with uh, the pinks. I mean, we know that the color directions have been more, uh, you know, monochromatic. And so here we're playing with, you know, two pink colors with the white and this more acid drop uh, colorway. Um, or something of more of a, a fruity effervescent, but it's not the pink fruits, it's yellow fruits, more like bananas and maybe mangoes and limes. Um, and here we play a little bit with that noir black and the white, or something just more mineral, um, minimal and simple like the wisteria, the white cotton, the sand, and the black noir. Um, so when we look at um, the prints and details, we're looking at um, a lot of inspiration, actually, because we talked about the French uh, countryside, uh, inspired by Van Gogh. And so we see lots of flowers, um, in particular Van Gogh sunflowers with this uh, canola yellow, um, with the ruffled 
petals that really add a touch of that south of France, um, you know, to the to the prints. Um, really, but all casual. It doesn't have to be just a sunflower. It's about all casual summer flowers, um, like sunflowers or daffodils, um, or you know, maybe you know, just white. Uh, little, those little white flowers that you find, the soft against the green. Um, but it's all about, you know, all this, these more casual flowers, this more natural charm feeling. Um, we're playing with refreshing new dots. Um, but even you can even play with uh, Provencal scarf prints um, actually in here. And for the fabrics, um, waffles and um, cliques and, and lightweight, uh, plain weave cottons, lots of micro motifs. Um, and there's a lot of eyeliting and crochets um, and all over eyeliting. And so uh, we see a crochet that's moving away from the tableware setting um, to dresses, but in more total simplicity um, with a little bit of a central edge um, that give it this, just this natural, easy um, charm that the French always just naturally seem to have. And so when we look at uh, the key looks, again, four key looks uh, for the season. Uh, the first look is around, like I said, this feeling of fun and village festivities. And so here uh, it's more of like the sparkling girl next door. And you've got these um, playful, uh, fun, playful messages on uh, T-shirts or bags with, again, lots of, you know, polka dot and micro dot motifs, fluid knotted skirts, both long and short. Um, and just, you know, playing with that fun kiwi green uh, pop for the shoe. Uh, and on the other side, you see lots to do with ruffles. So we've got off the shoulder dress with maxi ruffles, um, a belted waif, fun with the big jewelry um, and hoop earrings and beaded bags. Again, on the handbags, we're showing, you know, simple bags, simple shapes, very easy. Uh, and on the beading, we've got a lot of translucent materials because, you know, these, these translucent bags just give it kind of a simple, um, easy touch that goes with everything. And on the last two uh, looks, key looks, we look at uh, the Provencal more baby doll look, uh, playing with the baby doll uh, mini dress, you know, with the puff sleeved and off the shoulders, you know, a wide brim hat, brim, brimmed hat that can actually be in, in fabric in a printed um, fabric or it could be in natural um, fibers, uh, lots of sunflower motifs again, and just a very easy, um, we've got more lower heels this season and lots of you know, sneakers and, and casual shoes for comfort. So here we're looking at you know, these mules with a little bit of a translucent sculpted heel. And on the right side, again, playing with all the crochet and the eyeliting, um, even as you see in the outfit here, this head to toe uh, eyeleted look, um, with a basket weave bag, with a Provencal um, print scarf, a uh, fringe, and even you know the visors and hats and natural materials. And here we play uh, with the sandals with a natural, uh, more sculpted uh, wood heel. So that rounds up the key key trends um, for the season. Um, but as I promised, the team put together a few slides for me because you know Paris is now opening after the confinement um, and. Actually, uh, one of our uh, creatives on the team, Claire, who's been so instrumental in sending me information for this presentation today. Um, after the confinement, this um, Gabrielle Chanel exhibit opened uh, and, and she went and she took some great photos that she just wanted to share. Um, the Palais Galleria actually is the city of Paris fashion museum um, and it had just reopened um, its doors after really some extensive work that it was doing. and. They opened up the uh, with the first retrospective in Paris for you know this exhibit of the unique and remarkable uh, Gabrielle Chanel, and so the exhibit really invites you to discover the universe of style um, that's truly timeless, and that's very much at what we're looking right now. We're looking at you know very simple silhouettes, draping, comfortable. It's almost like this exhibit was um, opened at the perfect time, and so the first part of the exhibit is really a chronological um, exhibit that recounts all of the early beginnings um, of like her emblematic pieces, um, like the famous 1916, um, the Mariner sailor sweater in Jersey um, or the little black dress, you know, just her iconic pieces. 
And then the second part of the exhibition deciphers her dress code from the braided suit jacket to the quilted bag, the iconic jewelry. So um, it's really great that um, Claire was actually able to share this with me. Um, I don't know if they're tuned in today, but thank you, Claire, if you're watching. Appreciate it. Um, and just to share, I don't have a slide on it, but I just actually read today, so I wanted to mention it because it was really important as well. Um, uh, the Met finally opened its doors in New York City, uh, and they their first exhibit that they're starting with on October 29th, so just two days away, uh, is a presentation of uh, called a disrupted timeline of fashion. It's 150 years of fashion along this disrupted timeline, and. The exhibit is described um, as time is almost stopping because of the accelerated pace of life. Um, an acceleration of time is affecting the production of fashion. And so this is what we've all been grappling with at the moment because do we want fashion to slow down? We do, but we don't, but we're also aware of all the overproduction and overconsumption. And so um, the exhibit is really around the idea, the show ends with uh, supposedly this, you know, kind of 24-7 uh, need for everything instantaneous and wanting everything instantaneous. Um, yet at the moment, it's almost like immediacy has really halted <laughs> at this time. Um, and so this is exactly where we are in the moment. Um, and just like the trends that I shared with you today. Um, and what's even more interesting is that this exhibit had been planned at the Met um, but, you know, it was postponed because of, you know, social distancing and, and everything. Um, and now it's just opening right, you know, in the midst of where we are uh, with, with COVID. Um, and it's almost like it's just more relevant than ever because we're looking at, you know, fashion through these 150 years of disrupted moments. And this is exactly what the exhibition is um talking about. So there you have a great exhibition in Paris. If you're in Paris and you have one to go to at the Met, if you are in New York. Um, and then another slide uh, that, again, thank you, Claire. Um, and thank you, Edith, who um, actually took these photos. Um, but this is uh, Le Bon Marche. And um, this is a corner. Uh, uh, it's called Le, Le Bon Marché Rive Gouche, and it's the La Bouche Rouge Corner. Um, since 1950, um, this is what the exhibit's about. Since 1950, 9% of the world's plastic waste has been recycled, uh, resulting in 83% of plastic that's still polluted um, in, the in the waters. The water is still polluted by all 83% of the plastic. Um, so in order to celebrate Ocean Month, Bon Marche invited, you know, filmmakers and artists um, to capture the ocean in the purest forms. And they had a lot of fashion exhibits and, and things they did in the store. Uh, but this is just the most recent one they did. And it happens to be around beauty. Um, and you can see the fashion one in the center. Um, but it's about beauty for the planet. And they debuted in a corner in Bon Marche. And as we know, you know, the cosmetic industry is the third most polluting industry with the automotive being first and fashion being second. So automotive, fashion, <clears throat> beauty. And so uh, La Bouche Roots, uh, the, the, the motto behind it is to choose on purpose to avoid any plastics, not even use recycled plastics. All their formulations are produced uh, and products, um, and they do all the distribution to the store. So no more, no more plastic and beauty. I um, mean, everything, um, you know, that's just natural and free of plastic. Uh, and this is how, again, after the containment with the opening of the store, this is what they focused on. Um, and then lastly, I wanted, as I promised, to leave you with a little bit um, of being in Paris. And this is uh, of course, it was Paris Fashion Week, and so the team put together uh, just a little recap on the fashion shows uh, with some, you know, what we thought was really key uh, for you to uh, take away with. And so here, looking at this, we're looking at um, a little bit of uh, life in pink um, that we see here um, with the uh, Chanel. Oops, sorry about that. That's, yes, that is Chanel. 
uh, Life in Pink with Chanel. I just wanted to get the designers for you. Uh, in the center, we have this hybrid, like I showed you in the beginning trend, uh, this hybrid look, um, more sport technical and elegant chic uh, by Saatchi. And this idea of comfortable and punchy by uh, Louis Vuitton on the last image. Uh, here we're looking at tailoring and lot there is tailoring, uh, but because, you know, and I think we're going to probably want to have some tailored clothes after all the casual clothes we've been in. Um, but even the tailoring is very draped. I'm um, as soft. You can see there are a lot of shoulder effects, um, but the jacket is worn with, um, you know, a bike short again, the way we've been dressing at home. Uh, and then in the center, we have, um, these, you know, kind of tent volumes by Kenzo. And, you know, just to say, um, we're very sad um, to hear about the recent passing of the very creative and talented Kenzo um, at 81 years old, who unfortunately died just recently due to complications of COVID. So um, thank you, Kenzo, for all that you inspired us with and rest in peace, Kenzo, you will be missed. Um, so we had to have one of Kenzo in here. Um, and then lastly on the slide is um, all of the lace. There's a lot of lace, all of these really soft, as I said, lots of recycled laces as well for the season. Um, but a lot of uh, this more kind of lingerie and mixed uh, laces together. Uh, and then in this uh, last slide um, of Fashion Week, um, here we see uh, there's short skirts too. We have short lengths from Miu Miu, uh, the cycling suit, which is really an important item. This one is by Maj, uh, and then all the slouchy and flared um, pants that we're seeing here by Scaparelli, uh, and then lots of socks. Uh, these by Acme Studio, but we're wearing lots of socks right now, um, even at home because we're in our houses, not wanting to walk around with our shoes, maybe on the floor. Uh, and so wearing slippers with little socks. And so socks are a big trend uh, actually uh, for spring, summer 21 as well. Uh, so that wraps up the trend information. And uh, just to finish off with um, Carlin's offering, we have a, a lot of um, trend books and a digital platform, um, books from color to women's to lingerie, and beachwear. Um, again, we are uh, working with our clients on strategy, on their brand, brand platforms, on color, uh, working with specifically on color projects with our clients, uh, designing uh, collections, and also uh, working on uh, information and macro trends like I shared with you at the beginning of the presentation, which is really the basis where all the trends start. So consumer insights and um, research and development scenarios. Um, so if you uh, are interested, please feel free uh, to get in touch if you want to see uh, more. And I don't know, you might have some questions uh, today that I hope I can answer for you. Um, but, you know, my information is there and you can always feel free uh, to email me if you have more questions or if you, you know, want to set up a virtual presentation uh, to see anything else. So thank you very much. I, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jason.